Hi guys, Lee and Harry here from Learn to Business and you can see that we've entered the wacky world of podcasting. First of all, because we wanted to try something new and something uh, something engaging, uh, and we just thought it would be a better medium for you guys who are new to business or growing their business to hear from other great guests that we're going to have in the shows around the challenges that they faced and how they overcame them in growing their business. I guess, first of all, before we jump into that, Harry, what have you been up to over the past few weeks? Well, on a personal level, we've been redecorating the hall. So there's currently a painter and decorator just on the other side of that door if you hear anything. And else, I would say that the relationship that even this morning that's developed between the painter and decorator and my cat is beyond words. <laughs> Literally, I mean, that cat already loves that man significantly more than he loves me. <laughs> um, hopefully that'll turn out for, for well enough taking with him. <laughs> but, um, the, um, from a business sense, me and our, our mutual friend Ben have, have recently bought a flat in Glasgow where he lives. Um, and we've been um, we've been doing that up, and that is available for rent right now. Not, I'm, I'm suspecting anyone listening to this podcast will jump at the chance to move into that flat. But um, yeah, so that, that's what that's where what I've been up to How about you. Lee? Well, I guess uh, three weeks ago I was uh, a dad again. So I my partner gave birth to our little son Robbie. So I now have two kids running around the house, or one running around the house and screaming whenever they uh, feel like it, and a little one that. Um, tends to have lots of wind so I'm very busy hands on deck uh, as we go but I, I'm off for kind of three or four months now for paternity leave so I'm just looking forward to spending loads of time with my kids and really making the most of the time that I have um, so that's where that's where I'm at at the moment very tired and probably haggard I've tried to use the uh, the extra contouring or <laughs> feature on zoom but you can probably still see the bags under my eyes but um you look fantastic, oh, the, the usual Persian prince. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, mate. Thanks, mate. There's another Persian so, prince on the other side of that door that might end up screaming in a minute, so um, hopefully not. Isn't that lovely? <laughs> so our first um, our first podcast that we're doing is with your friend of, of 20 years, Lee, Matt Wood, um, and he's talking about his business, Run Through. Um, and they essentially started as an event running business, and from then is kind of developed in, in a lot of different ways and they've diversified, I think it sounds quite well, into things like a clothing brand, et cetera, which has definitely helped whilst running events have obviously come to a standstill during during the various lockdowns and that kind of thing. But really interesting story. He's obviously someone with quite an interesting background, traveling across the world, picking up different skills along the way. Um, and then um, I, I found it really interesting how it works between him and his business partner, Ben, because you've obviously got Matt, who's the kind of the driving force from the marketing commercial side of things. And then you've got Ben, who has got a full time job as a kind of an accountant. So he understands all of that kind of thing to a large degree. So he's in quite a good position where they've got both sides covered, which obviously not all businesses have. And some people are just on their own. And they, and that's where we help them. We can come into play and add that, that angle to the business and and try and, and try and get people covered from that perspective by educating them. But um I think um, worthwhile as well, I think mentioning the social media aspects, I think the hints and tips he had and advice on how to grow your following is was really valuable even for just us, wasn't it? So let's, um, let's dive in. Hi, Matt. Thank you so much for joining us today. This is Learn to Business's very first podcast. How does it feel to be with us today? What an honour to be on this podcast for the first day. <laughs> <laughs> no, so I guess um, for people that don't know, obviously, Matt, you and I have known each other for probably the best part of 20 years, if not more now, since secondary school. Um, I, I guess I thought you'd be a great guest, first of all, because I know you're always really open and honest with things and you're always wanting to help people. But I guess secondly, and probably most importantly, I had a good feeling that you'd say yes. <laughs> So um, I thought what would be great is if I could probably hand over to you just to give a bit of an introduction for the people that don't know you um, and run through that would be brilliant. Yeah, um, so my name's Matt and I run a, I suppose, a sports agency called GW Active. And within that agency, we have different event brands. We have a clothing brand, we have a travel brand, um, and we're at the point in time where we're trying to grow all those different things. But my background, I'm from Blackburn, um, same place as Lee. Um, and I went to university in Loughborough, Loughborough University, went there for three years. 
and then I went across to the uh, to Australia, working and traveling uh, for for a number of years as well, and then came back to the UK around 2012. And this is when I kind of started this particular brand. Um, there's a lot of in betweens and little things I can talk about um, in in the later on, but I think that's kind of a general idea. Yeah, and, and that's of interest. Have you always been someone who's had the kind of entrepreneurial spirit, or it? Have you had any kind of real jobs or have you always just thought that's not for me? I'm not that kind of person. I'm setting up my own business. Um, yeah, I suppose so. I, I think because I went to I went to university and I, I'd worked in jobs during school. So I went when I, when I was 16 years old, I went to the job center, got a job at McDonald's. I know you were, <laughs> you, you were, you were KFC. Lee. I was at KFC, um, yeah. <laughs> but like I've always worked. I've always had jobs. I've always wanted to have my own money. And then I got to say university, I worked in various jobs at university and then I ended up taking more kind of leadership roles within the kind of clubs and societies that I was part of. And the athletics club was, uh, it was at that point in time, the largest athletics club in the UK. I think it probably still is. And I became chairman of that in my third year, but I went up from the social sec in the second year. And part of that was organizing parties, organizing events, taking on responsibility. Um, and so I've always had an interest in earning money and I've always had an interest in like kind of leadership roles. So in terms of the entrepreneurial uh, part of it, I think those two things fit in well, because when I got to the point in time where I thought I need to find a job, I thought I need to do what I want to do and not what the plan is there for me. So when I went to Australia um, for the first time, I was just traveling and having a bit of fun. And then I met up with some friends that I knew, well, one friend that I knew from university at Loughborough, and he had his own nightclub business. And I thought, that's pretty good. I don't know anyone in Australia apart from him and a few backpackers. I'll get involved with this nightclub business. So I started going every, well, every Friday and Saturday nights and then going to the office during the week. And they were just kind of young lads running a nightclub business. And it was, it was fun, exciting. There was lots of distractions, but that was part of the thing. And um, I ended up becoming a bit of a fixture within that night. And then when I left Australia for the first time, I went to travel around South America and, and, and do that side of things. And when I came back, I was like, I, I need to go back to Australia because I've got some really good contacts that as far outweigh the contacts I've got in the UK for, for this kind of level of where I want to go. So I went back and ended up running the nightclubs for them. And um, so I was doing the Friday nights and it was like, I suppose it's like working the door in a way, but like it was more than that. You were kind of getting the guests, getting people in there, looking after people in there. We had a team behind us. It was a real big high end nightclub. And through that, I met lots of different contacts. And uh, one of those contacts was my friend TJ, who had his own, well, he just started his own gym. And at the point in time when I arrived there, I didn't have any um, money at all, I suppose. And I was just kind of like trying to give it a go. So I slept on the floor in his gym with, well, not with him, but we had separate rooms. <laughs> <laughs> and, Thanks for clarifying that. Yeah. <laughs> um, it, was, it was above the gym. And we asked that there for about probably like six months. And while I was doing that, I set up a massage business as well, like a, a sports massage business, not a dodgy one. And um, I had a massage qualification that I did during my degree at university. So I, I, I had lots of things going on, lots of different hands, different pots. And my friend Nick at that point in time had then pivoted to do a business where it was a creative agency. So I was kind of learning about how to do SEO, how to do PPC, how to do marketing. And I was drawn into these meetings with these highest level clients. And I was talking about my experiences with that. So I was kind of doing loads of stuff at once, all kind of um, sports entrepreneurial ventures and leeching off other people who were already there, but then also starting my own things as well and learning the process. So once I did that, there was no going back. I couldn't have a job after that. Uh, Cause I knew you could make more money doing it your own way than doing it another way. I guess it's kind of, it sounds almost, your story is quite different, isn't it? It's almost like you had like an entrepreneurial apprenticeship where you've had all of these people who were, I guess, running their own businesses and you were involved in them and you were slowly getting introduced to more and more parts of running a business. So it sounds like, I guess, you had quite a good introduction. So you weren't, I guess, just jumping off the, the dive board, so to speak, into just running your own business. You'd had quite a good, almost sort of on the job education as you were going through it, which sounds like it was probably helpful <laughs> in terms of it feeling a bit less of a risk when you, when you went ahead and started your own. Yeah, I definitely feel like because I did it at a younger age, that was more fearless going into it. So like when you're 22, 23, and you're seeing people who are 26, 27, doing their own thing and being around that and living around that, you know that it can be done. 
Whereas I think if I'd have started later, I went into a normal job, it would have been a lot harder to twist it around. And because of my personality, I've never really had any specific skill that stood out to me apart from talking to people, making friends, doing that sort of thing. So I think I didn't really think of that at the point in time, but I think that's probably the skill that helped me um, create the businesses. It's like almost that when people make that point of like you're a you're a sum of your friendship group. So the kind of the people you hang around with, that's who you kind of end up being. And it, and it sounds like because you were surrounded by a lot of people who were entrepreneurial, it almost like getting a standard job wasn't really an option almost. It's just this is what people do. This is a normal thing to do. Whereas I guess what a lot of people struggle with is they're probably their friendship group have got nine to five jobs. And if they're thinking, maybe I should start my own business everyone around them kind of isn't doing that. So it feels like this absolutely crazy thing and that it's a massive risk and everyone's probably that they speak to is scared of doing it and thinks that sounds like a massive risk. Like what if it doesn't work? You've got mortgage to pay, et cetera, et cetera. So I think, I think it's so important making sure you've, 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 you've got friends who are doing things that you want to do to give you that, I guess, someone to speak to and that confidence as well, isn't it? Yeah. And I think it's also, it's very hard to do that if you stay in the same environment you're in. So unless you take a step out and reach out to the people that you think um, might not talk to you or move to a different city or, or do something like that at, at an early age, I don't think you, you think your network's closed off a little bit and you can make it up. And there's many examples of people doing that. And it's probably better to have a kind of a background in a skill that you can kind of leverage yourself off rather than just kind of being a jack of all trades. But no, I, I definitely feel that, um, yeah, that helped. So you're obviously now in the, the UK, Matt. Where, where did things change? Why did you decide to, to leave Australia and come back to, to the homeland, if you, if you will? <laughs> um, I think it was partly to do with missing my family and wanting to be around everyone growing older. I suppose my sister, her family potentially, my mum and dad, that sort of thing. I did, I did miss them, not in a way like I needed them in my life. I just felt looking into the future. I thought, if I'm going to stay here and create a business, which is what I was doing, I need to stick it out for the long run and think 10 years down the line, not just like one or two and then hopefully flit off to back home. I need to take it really seriously. And I'd never actually tried. I probably shouldn't interject at one point in time because I did come back and I did start a nightclub business in Leeds. I lived there for a bit and did that for like six months. So I don't, my only experience of giving it a go in the UK was that. And when my old business partner, uh, who was a web designer, really creative person, he he came to me and said, "Let's go to um, Bali, not Bali, um, Thailand, to do a Muay Thai camp for a month." And this was at a point in time where my, my granddad passed away in the UK, so I was thinking about home. He came and met me, an old friend, and he was saying, "I'm doing all these different things with websites." And I was like, "I can jump on that. I can really help him make more money. I can really help myself learn some skills." So we sat in uh, a little room in uh, Thailand for just literally doing this weird. We read the Tim, Tim Ferriss book about sleep patterns and doing like Uberman sleeping and all this stuff. So we're doing like one hour, two hour sleeping and then getting up and we were like buying domain names, making websites and then selling the domain, selling the domain names for more money than what they created for. Because back then you could buy like a domain name and one of our best ones was what does my name mean? .co.uk and the amount of traffic that website got and we had on there like Google ads and people thought the Google ads were part of the website, but they weren't. It was making say like 600, 700 pounds a month just but doing nothing. And we did a few of them and they were never quite um, as good as that one, but we were flipping websites and, and making websites. And I thought, well, we could turn this into a client business. So when I went back to Australia, I thought, right, this is my chance. I'm gonna go back to the UK, go back home, save costs at home and get an office nearby to where I lived. Um, and we both did that, get an office, got big whiteboards and we're having all these different uh, like website, we're getting more clients. and. We kind of landed one that was good early doors, a pharmaceutical company through a friend that I met while I was traveling. And we kind of grew that with them from SEO client, building websites to them. And it became a substantial business. Like we were earning more than what I would do in a normal kind of job. And I was kind of doing something I actually quite enjoyed, which I think was the business building rather than the um, website stuff exactly. Uh, so I don't know if I've answered the question there. I've gone off on tangent completely, but um, yeah. yeah. It's just how you came back to, to the UK. And, and so I yeah, guess... Yeah, that, that, and that's why I came back, yeah. Yeah, because it sounds like you've done... You've had so many different experiences. You've tried so many different things. And so how... When you came on to um, your current businesses, how did that process happen then? 
So the current business was uh, is with Ben, and uh, at the time in 2013, I I literally I moved to London because my business partner moved to London, and I he moved to Teddington, and I moved to Essex, and we kind of just did stuff in London, had more meetings, trying to grow that particular business, and then Ben was working for Unilever, and um, he was he's a financial reporting manager for them, like quite high up, and he was quite young but very confident guy, so he was getting promoted quite quickly and earning good money. But he said, I don't want that corporate life. I, I want to have my own business. And Ben's a really kind of a really business savvy person. He was always kind of buying and selling things. And, and he bought, bought his own house at university, for example, by yeah. selling wallets online. So <laughs> he, he was always very, very smart, smartest man in the room every time he went into a room and confident in himself. So when he came to me and said, I want to do a business with you. And I was like, that, that's cool. I'm already doing one. What do you want to do? He's like, well, events. And I'm like, Okay, well, I know running, I know running events. I've been doing it all my life. I worked for Great Run. I worked for London Marathon, just doing part-time work when I was back at university. So I've got an idea of how how things play out. And I was like, okay, if you can get me a venue, I'll sell it out. And then he went, all right, then I didn't believe him to be fair. And then he, he went to went to one venue, got the venue, and said, right, I've got the venue. And I was like, right, this is it. So we sold we sold the event. Did one event. It was it was crazy. It was chaos. It was. Like I learned so much in that one day, just having a go at something that I wasn't overly sure apart from the general feel of it. And you got to bear in mind that our knowledge of a running event is very, very high compared to a normal person. Like we're not just average, but like we're both international athletes as kids. We've been to hundreds of events. So we have an idea of how it works, but the intricacies of the events, we weren't overly sure on. And it, it was such a weird day and like a bit, 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 bit of a crude thing that happened. At the end of the day, I was just so into it and I was like so focused on making sure this event went well. At the end of the day, I just kind of, I thought, right, I need the toilet. And when everyone left, and I, I just, I kind of almost did it in my own pants and then walked across the... <laughs> <laughs> I just, it, it's mad because like, the amount of, you put pressure on yourself to do this event and everything's kept in. And then it's just like, it finishes and you're like, oh, it, it was a mad experience. Like, but I cared about it so much, I do. Um, <laughs> I don't mind saying it because it's true. Because I was like, I was like, I cared about that more than I cared about my own personal self so um yeah I, I usually had that feeling before running events when it was athletic so <laughs> yeah, your yeah. race is being called <laughs> you're five minutes to go you're like i don't know if i've got time to go <laughs> yeah, <it was laughs> i think it, it sounds it sounds to me like we've made the point before haven't we Lee, in terms of you can you can try and like research things and try and get things to an absolute fine art before you do anything whatsoever and it just lends it lends to people kind of a year's gone before you know it and you've not actually done anything yet like Lee and his famous analysis paralysis, <laughs> but um, I, I think I think it sounds like you've you've done the right thing in terms of you just kind of had the idea and gone for it and accepted that first one's not going to be kind of clean, pristine delivery. There's going to be a lot of learning points, and I think that's the if just by doing, I guess I imagine the second event was significantly better than the first one just because of everything that you would have learned in that in that first one you went through and all of the mistakes that you would have made. For example, not going to the toilet all day. <laughs> yeah, that, that was okay, my personal. But in terms of the event itself, it did take us four or five events before we, we realized what we were doing properly. Um, and obviously, when you start a business, you're kind of losing, you're losing money every time. You're not making any money. We didn't make any money for a long time after doing that because we were, we were investing back in it and buying equipment and trying to keep our costs down. And Ben's very smart financially, so he was kind of making saying, well, we can buy that because in five events time, we'll be able to use it for free, basically. Why pay for that service if we can do it? And having him doing that stuff, whereas I was kind of just like, I want the event to go well. I'm going to put my effort into it and make sure we sell it out. People turn up, have a good time because then that will make sure in 10, 10 events time, people will come back. So we had two different strategies going on. And I think together they worked. Um, yeah. It sounds like a perfect combination, actually. Mm -hmm. um, and, and in terms of those kind of initial outlays, do you have a, any kind of memory as to how much things work um no doubt you need like a pa system and chips and that kind of thing but what, what were like the big the big capital costs for you guys yeah um to start an events business it is one of those businesses where it is it's great because you get the cash up front off the participants in advance so you can have more room to play with and uh, you do you do, t you do tend to kind of be able to buy things early doors that you wouldn't be able to do if you had to kind of do the event and then get paid afterwards so we were kind of had a luxury that way, probably like, I don't know, four or five grand each startup costs um, we put into it, which which went on like equipment and signage and all that st stuff that was still at a limited level to what we have now compared to like, 
and stuff like we used to rent the vans and this is for the first like three years probably before we even bought them probably two years before we even bought a van we used to rent a van we used to go to a storage unit which we hated paying for put all this stuff in the storage unit. first it was our houses our flats in Wimbledon um, and we used to drive the van to the storage unit unload it in the storage unit do the event so load it in do the event come back unload it and drive it back that night to save the money on the extra day so stuff now where we have our, our employees who we don't want them to get back from an event at four o'clock knackered and then go to a storage unit and spend three hours unloading something. So we actually pay for the extra day. So as we built the business, you can see how costs creep up because we're not actually doing that graph work that we used to do from the start. But um, yeah, yeah, I don't know if that answers the question either. So. I think we've, I think we've, so we've, we've talked about, I guess, you starting the business and, and those early days. Could we like fast forward to where you are now in terms of what does the business look like? What employees have you got? What, how have you, how have you progressed the business since then? Yeah. So it, it kind of happened gradually over a period of time, but our, our goal has always been the same in terms of run through and, and what that is and wanting to kind of have as many people as possible come to these events UK wide rather than it just being one or two large events that we looked after as a lifestyle thing. We wanted to make it into a proper business that we could be proud of and employ people who like running and the like sports. And I think the vision from 2013 to 2016 was slightly different from 2016 onwards. 2016 onwards, it's been more about building an agency that has lots of brands in it to try and compete with someone like I know it's a massive like IMG or that's that's my inspiration that sort of stuff that's obviously we're so far behind that it's unreal but that's what I look at and go I want to be like them and but in 2013 2016 it was like let's just survive let's do the next event let's show make sure people enjoy these running events and come to all of them we put on so the kind of the vision's changed a little bit but over the last four years have been consistent so 20 probably 20 employees we've got an office uh, store, two storage units north and south we've got um two offices north and south and we've got probably hundreds and hundreds of part-time staff that do the events around the uk that which takes managing which takes someone's full-time role to manage that kind of stuff there's marketing communications teams um i've got my own separate thing which is like a marketing agency kind of thing so i take on clients to do their marketing communications for them and um, so there's that as well and then we're trying to deal with corporates and charities and we've got a whole side of business that does that as well so there's a variety of stuff that we're doing and it's grown naturally, but it's also grown with intent. I mean, you're making me feel incredibly lazy as you run through <laughs> each of those different things. And I'm thinking, I record a video every now and then I've got a job and I'm like, shut off my feet. <laughs> I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't view it as that. Like, I don't think, I think that when, if you were in my position now, it's the same, same day as what you'd have. Like you're still doing the tasks that, I'm doing probably similar to yourself in terms of like managing people or uh, cr creating stuff that people need to, to see. And do you know what I mean? There's, it's the same structure. It's just, it's taken like, like all this time to build up the infrastructure underneath us to be able to be like that again. So I think the, the startup phase of any business, you can't even compare it. It, it is all in. It's like you wake up in the morning, it's all you think about. You go to bed, it's all you think about. You don't go to bed until one, two because the stuff you need to do. And it, like, it doesn't matter what your life involves. You need to put it all into the business itself or else, like, what are you doing it for? Because that, that yeah. three or four year period is hard. But then after that, if it's, you create something that you enjoy, you're sorted for as long as you want to, as long as you want to do it for. And, and that might not be a long time if you get lazy and relax and not do anything. But I think that you have to just kind of accept that it's going to be, horrible and you won't see your friends and family as much as you want to you miss out on those nights out you're kind of a bit like you're not having the phone calls with your friends that you're meant to have your relationships it's hard to do that as well i'm looking my partners she works she, i met her coming to work at an event so we had a connection through that and we've kind of grown and she's now a part of the business and and that helps a hell of a lot because in my opinion because rather than getting home and having someone ask you what you've done the person knows what you've done and they know that it's been hard and they know that they've probably done the hard, a hard day as well. So you don't have to talk about it. You can just talk about other things. I think that's a good thing that you're able to manage that because I guess there's a risk where you're doing the business kind of together that that then becomes all you talk about. So you get home after work and it's just like 
So this is going on with the business. This is what we're doing tomorrow. So I think it, I think it's good that you can you can separate that and you kind of said, well, we've done that all day. Like we can talk about something else now, talk about something different. Yeah. Sorry that you were saying. Yeah, yeah, something that you touched on a minute ago, Matt, was you know what are we doing this for? And whenever you kind of you you read entrepreneurial books, it always talks about what people's reason why is and kind of what what puts the fire in 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 your belly. And what what is that? thing that keeps you moving forward so it definitely is getting for the large part of what we do at this point in time and my passion has always been running as a like you know from when i was a child i was, I was always the person that ran ran at international level went to love for a scholarship for that reason i love running so for me it's getting people running and by getting people running it means they're getting out of being healthy it means they're improving their mental health it means that they're making new friends and without running, they wouldn't have done those three things. And I just think running is a great gateway into doing that. And then as I've got to this point now, I'm thinking, well, sport's a good way to do that. Sport is a good way to get people making friends, doing things. So yeah, my passion is getting people out to do that because I know I feel better. And obviously there's, for the business side of things, there's, there's the kind of incentive to try to grow the business. But like the margins as you grow aren't as good as what they were when you start. So you actually earn less, but you're employing more people. So you're impacting more people, but earning less and hopefully building something more substantial. So I am a person that leans towards growing something big to be more impactful than making a few short-term bucks for myself. Um, so I think that's my why, yeah. Yeah, and something that's pretty evident actually when, because I follow the, the run-through um, community chat and what I find incredible about that is just how positive people are. Um, when people join the, the welcome, when people hit a new PB, everyone applauds. If um, you know someone runs at the first 5K or 10K, it, people are just really reinforcing that achievement. And um, I remember there was a guy, it was probably around five or six months ago, he kind of opened his heart up to say, look, I'd been suffering from all of these. I think he had depression and all sorts of other kind of mental challenges that he's had, but it's just like, you know, it's the kind of run through community that had really saved him and kind of pulled him through uh, and just people being positive, which, you know, that's an incredible kind of statement for me. And you must be really proud of, of that community. Yeah, massively. And to see the people who come to the events and, and talk about it in such a positive way afterwards, like it's, it's a real, like, and sometimes it's, it's so unexpected that it gives you a really, like a, like a boost. Like most people who build a product or have a, uh, a service generally the feedback they're getting is this isn't right well this is broken that sort of stuff whereas with the events you do get a lot of people who are happy with themselves because they've completed a event or done a challenge that they didn't think they could do and because of that they're related and they'll, they'll, they'll thank the people that put that on and that happens to be us for these people and i think by reinforcing that and i think my personality is like you mentioned, it is kind of a positive looking one. And and Ben is that way as well. Like we always like positive about stuff in the future and trying to build stuff. And that filters down to hopefully our events team. And hopefully that they feel the same about things and they feel positive about the future, positive about the people they work with. And it's hard to hire people. And it's one of the toughest things to do when you're doing a business, probably the toughest. And I think those people that we're hiring are, are, enjoy it like we do. And they get involved with the runners and feel that they are doing something good for them. And with all the different kind of tasks that you're managing personally, uh, as the business has grown, how, how, how kind of hands on, on the day-to-day -day piece are you? Cause I think a pitfall that people often fall into it, it seems is that when a business is growing, it's you who's trying to effectively CEO who's trying to control everything. And then you just run yourself into the ground because you literally can't do everything. How, how kind of controlled are you with, with decisions on a day-to-day -day basis? I think we're, we're both still really involved in that. And that's probably something we need to work on in the future. Like a lot of decisions, the small like kind of decisions are made by everyone. But then we'll, when they feed back to us at team meetings, just, we're always having our input. And I think my role probably is kind of facilitating the speed of everything to make sure everything's done at, at a level that I feel comfortable with. And that might be a bit of a micromanaging thing that I need to work on, but it's difficult when you want something done and you want it done quickly to just let, let it slide. And that's the opposite of what I'll do. So I, I think, yeah, you're right. Like it, it can run you into the ground, but it's nothing compared to what it was at the start. You've got people helping you do things that that's yeah. not, that's so good.
yeah to be honest I, I think I think you're being a bit harsh on yourself Matt, then. I, I think from from what it sounds like you you used to be the person doing all the work and now you're the person who listens to the people who are doing the work and provides a bit of feedback and direction and I think that's exactly kind of to me what you should be doing in terms of you've got the experience you've got the vision of where the the business is going and you're just making sure that all of those decisions are kind of still pushing everything in that direction so to me it sounds like you're doing and exactly what you should be doing. I mean, you, you, you're the one kind of spending the days and you might find that you are in the trenches a little bit, but I think it sounds like you're taking quite a good role in that from, from what you've just said. No, cheers, yeah. No, it's, um, yeah, it's, it's difficult to think about unless you, like, I asked a question like that, so. Um. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. And I guess you've you've been working with, with Ben, as you've mentioned a few times. How have you found, I guess, having a business partner throughout? Because I think from, from me and Lee doing learn to business together it's been a massive asset because I kind of know myself only too well and if I was trying to do this on my own I'd get so far and then I'd start getting a bit lazy I'd start kind of keep pushing things and going Fuck, I've got enough, too much other stuff going on with like work I'll kind of revisit it later but then and Lee I should imagine you've had kind of similar things where having Lee saying where we're up to with this we need to put this in kind of you become accountable to each other to some degree and it kind of forces you along and it's kind of not just your willpower anymore. You've kind of got the power of two. Have, is, have you found that with with your business? Or it sounds like you're probably passionate enough that you would have driven it through yourself, to be honest. Well, to be honest, you, like there's a there's a whole other side of my personality that I don't have, which Ben does have. So I we could have never done what we've done without together. No, no way. Um, we, we we work so well together, and the 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 opposing skills that we have are a massive part of that. And I think initially, the early stages, it was just like two mates, like organizing events together, putting our all into it. And then afterwards, going to the pub and getting really drunk afterwards and just talking about how fun the day was and what we learned. And then he'd go to his job on the Monday and I'd crack on with my web clients. And it, it was, and then but every night we were talking about things. He finished work at like six, seven o'clock, get back home. We were doing everything like packing race numbers, like sending emails. We were flying every morning at, at, at events around the country, getting up in the morning. So we were doing so much stuff. Like flat, it was before Facebook adverts we started, really. Well, we didn't have any money for Facebook adverts at the start. Um, and then when we did that, uh, it, it kind of grew. But yeah, I, I definitely needed him for this, especially the ter terms of the financial side of things. It's just good to bounce off someone with ideas. And I think he finds the same with me. He will throw an idea at me and I'll say, oh, that's not quite right. This is quite right. But it's more often the case where I'm throwing things at him and he's like saying, well, that's stupid. And I'm like, okay, yeah, fair enough. It is stupid. Why did I say that? And <laughs> but, but we got to the point now where the relationship's so strong where I don't, I'm not offended if he doesn't even reply to it or if he doesn't even acknowledge it as an idea. If I think it's a good enough idea, I will come back to it and I'll say, I think this is a good idea. Because if, it, if a good idea is a good idea, it'll always come through. And sometimes I'll say something about six months later, he'll say the same thing. And I'm like, well, I said that before and then <laughs> and, and vice versa, definitely vice versa as well. So you need to have someone like that. And if it is your friend, that helps a hell of a lot. It helps if you've got a friend that's got kind of opposing skill sets. But even if they haven't, even if you've got the same skill sets, like double down those skill sets together and you, you, you're going to you're going to enjoy it more. You're going to enjoy that process. And um, yeah, no, definitely. But I guess you, I guess you've touched on it a bit then in terms of there's the side of the business where obviously your passion lies in terms of running events, keeping people healthy, um, making a difference in people's lives. And then there's the side of business that's, I guess, a bit less appealing and where I imagine your passion probably doesn't lie, which is more of the finances and actually running, I guess, what's needed to run a business. So it sounds like you've been quite fortunate in terms of your partner is someone who's got the financial background and, and can therefore is I guess literate in in that that side of the business so how, how have you found running that have you kind of just left that to to Ben or have, or have you kind of almost had an education in all of that works at the same time yeah well I think because I've started businesses in the past and I, I've got a general idea of how things work in terms of what, what I need to do to, to earn money and not be <laughs> run out of it so but the the nitty-gritty of it which is something you'd have to pay a lot of money for to have a, like a, what do you call it? Like a, a chartered accountant work on your business as a startup. You couldn't afford it. Like to afford him as an hourly, it's impossible, a, a young startup business. So to have that from the start has always been something where I've gone, he's got this. I trust him implicitly. Let's do it in, this, in the same way that he'd never even talked about the marketing for the events and 
how much money we spent on certain things because you can see the finances after things have happened and you can analyze off the back of that. And we, we kind of have an approach where I'm kind of acting and moving forward and then he's analyzing what's happened and coming up with solutions on how we could improve what the processes we're doing. So it's kind of like a three-pronged attack in terms of like, I'm always looking forward, he's looking back, but then together we're both strategizing for the future based on the two things that we're doing, um, which is it's interesting approach and it, you can't do it on your own. And even if you paid someone to do that, I do think it would be very hard to get that kind of insight into it. And especially because he's the kind of person that's entrepreneurial. He's, he's really passionate about the same things I'm passionate about. And we have, we're kind of aligned on, I don't know how to describe it, but like almost like philosophy, I suppose, but like religion in a way, not, not actually religion, but like we've got the same kind of thought patterns. We, we, we think very similar about a lot of things. It's just we the have same kind of core values, I guess, that sit underneath the way that you approach things. Yeah, exactly. Core values. And like Ben's a bit quieter myself in certain scenarios and some scenarios he's completely not, but he, he's got a warm heart as well. And we do tend to lead with that in a way. Uh, it might not come across like that in some situations, but we definitely lead from, is this the right move for the people that we're working with, for the customers that come to the events? Is this the right move for that rather than a, a cold hearted calculated financial decision? Yeah. And, and I, I guess you mentioned, you mentioned it a bit before in terms of Facebook ads, but I think that that'll be something people and I think me and Lee are probably really interested in as well. In terms of your social media following is is getting pretty big now. And it's obviously a big part of your business because it's it's how a lot of people kind of spend the downtime now. It's kind of scrolling through Instagram and that kind of thing. So how have you how have you grown that side of your business from a social media perspective across the different platforms? I think from the start when we started in 2013. I'd already had that kind of schooling in social media with the nightclubs, with my own marketing company, with like all that side of things. So I knew what I was doing from that perspective. And Facebook adverts were really raw at that point in time. And now they're not. Now the cost per click for a Facebook advert is five, six times what, what it was back then. It, it's ridiculous because all these big brands have jumped on it. Coca-Cola, Pepsi, like Unilever, whatever it is. They're all jumping on Facebook adverts. Whereas then they weren't even thinking about it. So from that perspective, early doors we kind of got lucky in the time we started the uh the company because of that reason because of my knowledge within it then we've grown instagram which has been a massive part of what we do and we did that because like ben and i both ran we built our personal profiles up on instagram talking about running because we like running it's not hard to do that and through that we kind of built the run through um channel up as well so yeah it's, that's kind of the approach we took building our personal profiles within the running community and then that's kind of helped run through become start get to a start point of which then the staff have now taken it to another level and do you still do you see the value in still doing like facebook ads and like sponsored ads on instagram because i guess that's that's a question where probably where me and leah are at where we've been trying to post consistently and that type of thing and it's a case of to extend our reach should we start using these kind of like almost paid advertisement like things yeah i, I think that comes down to the income you've got and how much you want to spend on it and like you guys are finance guys and you, you, you know exactly how to, to budget things. And if you had a budget of say 10,000 pounds to throw into this business, would you spend all of it on Facebook adverts? Probably not. There's, there's smarter ways to do it. But if you're not doing paid advertising, like you're not really doing advertising. Uh, it's, it's not, it's just, you need to put stuff up every single day on your social media channels. I'm not saying you personally, but the business channel. Um, if you do it personally as well, that's brilliant. But building brand around the business is important and paying for adverts is great if you've got the budget for it, but I wouldn't put all your eggs in that one basket, hoping you're going to get something. It's, it's, it's consistency. It's being relevant to the people that you're talking to. It's finding a way into the conversations with, with a legitimate reason without looking too spammy. They're more important than, and that takes time and that takes your own time to do. But like I said, that first three year period is just your time gone to build something. And then three years time, maybe even two years time or whatever it is, it might be five, but it will be better for them. And then you can shut the Facebook adverts in there. You often see people doing similar things to what, what, what you guys are, are planning to do and they do throw money at adverts, but a lot of the time, and the same way you guys put a sports have with your, your income and your jobs and stuff, you, you do already have that base. You already have money coming in. You don't have to worry about it that much. You're not like relying on this as your full-time job at this point in time. So, why, why not throw a bit of money into it? You've got the money coming in, no matter what you do. So it might be actually a, a better way for you guys who are time poor 
but I suppose more cash rich to, to do that way. So yeah, but I do think it's more about consistency with your posts and getting involved in the conversation. No, I think that's, that's really valuable. So I, I guess taking us towards today and where we're at, we're at now, I guess we're at the strangest time, obviously in our lifetimes, um, in terms of, of COVID, et cetera. And obviously that's had a massive impact on your event business because at the moment, I imagine there's there's no events that can take place because of distancing, et cetera, and, and lockdown regulations. How has this, this impacted your business and I guess your day-to-day -day beyond the obvious? Beyond the obvious, which is we can't do events and we do a lot of events. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah it's, it's been strange, especially when it happened last March. It was, it was, a, it was a weird period where everyone knew that COVID existed and the government weren't really doing anything strong about it. So we were still doing events and they are outdoor events. And like the generally, if you go for a running event, you're trying to run away from people, not like congregate. It's, it's like the opposite of what, um, so it was a weird time. And then when it all kind of hit, we were confused as what to do. When the furlough thing came in and all the financial help for it, that really kind of put everything at ease, I think. And we knew that we can keep the staff on board. We, we could keep the business ticking over behind the scenes by putting my time in, into it and um, some of the, of the management team's time into it to keep it moving. And the important thing for us was to double down on us as a community, us as a brand. And that was the only thing we could do. So because of that, we've kind of pivoted a part of the run-through brand into um, clothing. So we had, a, weirdly, it, it, would be, it was kind of planned for the last like two or three years, back and forward, getting products and testing things out. And then the whole order that we spent like a substantial six figure sum on arrived in the office in May. And we were like, brilliant. We've got something to sell for the next few months to hopefully keep things ticking over, pay the cost of the, because we didn't get government support for, for anything that we had apart from furlough. So it, it was, it was helpful to keep the storage units, to keep the offices, keep the vans, keep everything running and be able to still put money aside to, to push for the marketing. So in terms of the, the kit and everything else, the brand. So yeah, it's a tough, tough time and it's still not great. Obviously we're going through hopefully the last period of a lockdown um, with the vaccines and stuff. And I think that the, the people's voices will be so strong off the back of this if it goes back to anything like what it was in January or even last year. So with well, fingers crossed, things will come back and even just remembering what it was like in a nightclub or a bar or something like that. It seems so far-fetched right now, but they will Impossible, come back. Isn't it? Yeah, but Impossible. they will come back. Yeah, yeah. but it, they have to come back because they were always there and the world's going to go back to normal again in some way, maybe some sort of distance in play, but events can still happen within that. And this last year or so, it's helped me a little bit take a step back from run through and GW Active and the stuff we're doing and maybe focus my, more atten my, my attention more on diversifying what we do. So hopefully when we come back to reality, I'll have a few different hands in different parts to be able to grow those rather than focusing on the one thing with, with the events which again might take two or three years to actually come to fruition with these other two or three things, but at least I've started it now. Um, and I'm happy about that. How is the clothing line going? Cause I've seen, I always see lots of different posts and um, I've got some lovely kit myself, actually um, a nice t-shirt, which actually makes me feel like I've got <laughs> biceps, which I can't say has happened <laughs> in quite some time. Um, but how is it, how is it all going on, on that side? Yeah, it's good. We, it helps how we've got a head start in a way that we called it run through. We've, we deliberated for ages about calling it a different name because like, why not? But we end, end up coming back to the point is like, why change the name of something? It's to do with running. It's going to help people running. It's going to help people enjoy their running more by having nice clothing that they can wear. So it all fits in and like we call it run through kit, but like RTK, hoping that will be a kind of the brand name that takes off in the future, which means it can probably move into like gym wear, that sort of stuff. And yeah, it's been good. Like the, our audience has taken up quite well already, like in terms of the runners and people that come to the events and they've been really supportive about it. And it's been a real kind of, uh, kind of a, a lifeline, but it's also been interesting to see how a product business works and how the difference in the like Facebook adverts, Instagram, uh, email marketing, how all those things apply to a product rather than to an event. Cause I've spent seven years heavily in the event world and I haven't really had anything apart from a couple of clients to do anything with the product side of things. So it's been really good to kind of throw my own money at something and know that I could potentially get a return from it. Whereas before I was kind of using client money and having to be really clever about it 
and maybe not getting the returns or testing out stuff that I would have been able to do with my own. And now I've been able to do that. I've learned where things go a little bit better and what we need to do. So yeah, it's been good. Yeah. And I guess, I guess, as you mentioned, then it's, it's quite a different business, isn't it? Selling products rather than doing events, kind of moving from services to products is quite a big thing. Have you just, I guess, worked that out yourself in, in, in how that changes and how you kind of go to market and all of those types of things? Or have you, have you spoken to like external advisors in terms of what's the best way to approach things? I think, I'm not sure if it's like ego or, or I think it's like, I, I find it hard to reach out to people in that regard. And I've always found it difficult to, to pay money f- for those services. Like it's me personally, I'm not saying that it's, it's wrong because I know there's a hell of a lot of value in doing that. And I've got a lot of friends who are very successful who do do that. What I've tended to do is kind of offer something to people that are kind of in a different sphere to me that I want to learn from, offer something to them in terms of my service, my time, and hopefully I can learn something through osmosis that way, more so than me paying for the service as an outside. And having Ben as well, and he's worked for Unilever, he was like like head of, he was pot noodle, he had all these different brands in the savory snacks. So he has a real good insight into the nitty gritty of the of a product business. So having him on yeah. side for that has been brilliant. And I, I think I kind of undervalue that in a way, and I probably should give it more kudos, I suppose, because it is invaluable because he, he just has a sense for the numbers. So it really does help. And, uh, but I do think in the long term, it is generally about feeling and about how much you want to put into it. And if you want to chuck money at something and knowing in five years time, it's going to benefit you, then do it. And if I, I've got a real good insight into the marketing, the cost per clicks, the, the nitty gritty of marketing. So I know when I'm wasting money, I know when I'm not wasting money. And if I had to pay for an agency to do that, you have to pay an agency fee. You have to pay, uh, I have to spend that time on the phone with them, learning and asking questions. Then you get the stats, analyze them. Whereas I am innately feeling these things. And I know when I'm wasting it and when I'm not. So I think, I mean, it just comes back to it. It sounds like the partnership between you and Ben is, it works perfectly, doesn't it? You kind of got both yeah. sides the, of the business really kind of down within. You don't have to, I guess, go out, outside of the business that much because you've got a lot of the stuff covered between your marketing knowledge and that and running the business from that perspective. And Ben's commercial knowledge, finance knowledge, and all of that. So it sounds like it's um, sounds like it's a really good match. Sorry, Lee. Yeah, I was going to say that I've, exactly that point actually, and I think um, you know that, that's exactly where we're trying to help you know people who are new to business who don't really understand the financial side of, of running their business. So you know they don't they don't all have a not every business has a Ben, and as you say, people can't always afford to pay big accounts of fees in the in the beginning. So we're hoping just to give people that kind of toolkit and some grounding in running the financial side of their business to um, help them move forward. Um, so yeah, definitely watch this space. Um, I am a little bit conscious of, of time and I know you're a very busy man, Matt. Um, so just probably a couple of things to wrap up if, if I may. I guess, first of all is for anybody who's listened to this podcast who you know they're thinking about starting their business or they're at that stage where they have started it, any kind of key advice that you would give to those people? Yeah, I, just back on your point, and this probably relates to the question you asked as well, the, the importance of having someone who is financially literate working with you is, is massive. And not being afraid of giving a significant chunk of your business, um, of the earnings you have to someone like that. I was fortunate that I started a brand with a friend who had that skill set. So it wasn't really me making a choice. It was us coming together and starting a company. And it so happened that we had these opposing skill sets. But if you weren't that person and you were a bit more, say, along the lines of my personality type and you didn't have that extra person, that new finances, reach out to that person. And, and a company like yourselves doing that is a perfect way to do it. If you don't understand certain things, being having letting go of your ego and saying, I don't understand this, please help me. And listen to the advice you're getting and try and apply it in the best way you can. I, I've, I've found like, and Ben's not this kind of person, but found financial people are generally more um, safety, risk averse, that side of things. So taking their advice and pushing the boundary a little bit is probably a good way to go, but you need to take their advice as a starting point because people in finance and accountants, they do, they give their advice for a reason. They know what they're talking about, but it doesn't mean that you have to listen to it and apply it directly. You need to put your own twist on it. And, and I think that, That'd be good advice. Take as much information as you can on, ask people, pay for people's advice, and then find your 
comfort point with how far you push it. That's perfect. And finally, Matt, uh, final question here is, um, we like books here at Learn to Business, and I know you're into your books too. Um, would you have any key, one recommendation for a fantastic book that you think everybody should read who's new to business? One's hard for me to say, Lee. I've got, I've got so many that I've read over the years that have inspired me to different parts of, of where I was at. And I always tend to find the book that I, that the book finds me that I need at that point in time. So when I started in business, it was books about startup. When I was going the business, it was about how to grow a business, how to structure things. And now it's at a point where I'm reading like leadership related books and that sort of stuff. So, but the books that started me off, the two books, four hour work week, and the title is misleading because it's, it's not about working four hours. It's about working the complete opposite, but being really efficient with your time. And I think anything by Gary Vaynerchuk, but the first one we read was Crushing It. Listen to the audio book, actually, that one. And he spoke it through. And that really motivated me to kind of follow my passion and, uh, and do things that I wanted to do. But yeah, anything by him is fantastic. Great stuff. Um, well, I think have... I think that I mean I've got that ex I've got one of those exact books above here. <laughs> it made me laugh when you were saying that we um we like books and there's literally books behind both of us. <laughs> yeah. There's Backed children's up, books on this side. Those books in your room. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are they yours? Yeah. Yeah. Do I, you those, those, I think the Gruffalo, the Gruffalo, <laughs> and all the sorts of other children's books down there. The Gruffalo is where you get your drive. Yeah, well, I think yeah. um, I think this has been this has been a massively helpful, even just for for us to guess the talk through through the social media parts specifically. I think was was really helpful, and um, and and I think in terms of where you're at, you say that you're you're looking up to those industry leaders, and you feel like you're a million miles away. There will be so many small businesses that will be looking at where you are and thinking that seems a million miles away. Um, and it's, it seems like I'm never going to be able to get there. But I think just talking through how you've you've got from running a first couple of events and, and nearly putting yourself to where you're at today, I think is um, I think is really really valuable and showing that there is a kind of there's a well trodden path of how you can do it. So I think that's been that's been massively helpful. So I do appreciate your time on this point. No, thank you. Great. Thanks a lot, Matt. All right. Well, I think I think that was all the other stuff we wanted to cover, isn't it, Luke? Yeah, it really was. Yeah, it's brilliant. Great stuff. Thank you so Thanks much, Matt. And we'll keep being tipsy. soon. What an interesting conversation that was with Matt. He's obviously had a, a really interesting, a really interesting journey to where he is at today. And I think it's it's really interesting to to understand how lucky he felt to have have Ben on board as someone who's got a real grounding of the financial knowledge of, of how to run that side of the business from 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 the full time job he had as a, as an accountant. And obviously, most people don't really have that. Most people are probably creating things from home. They've probably never had any real form of education around finances, running running the kind of the finance side of a business. And that's really why me and Lee decided to set Learn to Business up, is just to give people a bit more knowledge and education experience so they feel a bit more confident on, on how to run, I guess, the full part of the business and, and how the finances work. And we're not expecting you to become an accountant when ask expecting to become a specialist in this your time and energy should always be spent on running the business and the parts of that that you feel passionate about but hopefully the kind of information that we're providing makes conversations with your accountant a lot easier and means that you can have a bit more of an active role in those discussions and hopefully take some benefit in in how you can run your business more efficiently perhaps so if you want to learn more then you can always go to learn to business.co.uk but thanks a lot for listening guys cheers